All right, here we go, my loves. Finally got pre-med loaded up and sent to you. So I'm doing intro three, week three, telephone techniques. And I just wanted to let you know, I, I just put this on for the heck of it so you'd see a mask. But I'm inside, okay? I don't care what the pictures look like being outside. I'm inside. All right, love you. Hold on. All right, here we go, cupcakes. We're starting with intro three, week three, telephone techniques. And I think everything is highlighted that should be. All right, number one, we're going to work on vocabulary. The first one is voicemail, and that is communication tool to record a verbal message. It used to be called an answering machine, but now it's voicemail. Uh, amenity. Oh, that's a nice amenity. Something that's conducive or that helps or in, encourages comfort, convenience, or enjoyment. Oh, that's such a nice amenity that you put an extra chair in the room. Um, established patient. That's a patient that's returning to the office and they've been there before. They've seen the doctor. Uh, screening. Not screaming, but screening. That's selecting which calls should be forwarded to which staff member through an understanding with the purpose of the call. So you find out who's calling, where they, who they want to speak to, and why. And then you have to screen the call, all right? Um, HIPAA was added. HIPAA, H-I-P-A-A. -A. Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. That's what it means. Okay, it's also going to be on the last page. Active listening. Now, I know there's a difference between listening and hearing. I think I explained that once before. You're driving down the street on the street you're not familiar with. Radio's turned up, and you're looking for your friend's house address number. And you look, and look, and all the thing, first thing you're going to do is turn the radio down. Why? It's distracting, okay? It's taking your attention away. I don't care if it's even noise in the background. So you can be either, my nose itches, you can either be hearing which is when you put the TV on and you're doing something else. That's hearing. Listening is giving the person your full attention. Not only listening to what's being said, but how it's being said. So the uh, and definitions are giving the same attention to the person on the phone as you would face-to-face. -face. You're not going, you wouldn't do that face-to-face. -face. I hope not. Um, concentrating on the conversation at hand. Don't be thinking of what you got to go home and buy for dinner and discovering vital information, all right? Um, let's see, I put something here. Speaker saying nonverbal clues. You know, they can even do nonverbal over the phone with their tone of voice. Active listening is essential to, or you need active listening. Listen to what the speaker is saying. Listen to nonverbal clues, like That's a nonverbal clue. Interpret what the message is. Try to, you know, people call sometimes these older people and they're lonely and they'll get to talking and talking and to kind of bring them back down to earth because you got three other lines ringing. You kind of say, and, and how can I help you today, Miss Jones? Oh, I'm sorry, honey. I got, okay, just keep that line. Also, restate the message. Let them know that you understood it. So you're going to restate it. Incoming calls. Here we go. Incoming greetings. It should be Dr. Orlando's office, Miss Perfect O speaking. You always mention the office first and then your name. All right. Um, and put a smile in your voice. I don't mean you got to kill them if they're a diabetic with overload of sugar. Like, ooh. No, just don't. Dr. Perfect's office. No, no, no. That's not how you want to do it. All right. Speakerphone. This can get you in a lot of trouble. Use of a speakerphone is not wise or advised in a doctor's office, okay? And you should be extremely careful when using a speakerphone because confidentiality could be violated, all right? Um, to comply with HIPAA, it's not used in an area where conversations can be overheard, all right? That's a rule for speakerphones, all right? Uh, let's see, um, to do, do, do telephone messages. You'll be taking a lot of messages. We used to take them on that little pink thing that said, while you were out, so-and-so called, but now you're going to do it all on the computer, but it's still taking a message, all right? All right, you don't need the caller's account number to take a phone message from somebody, all right? What you do need is their name, that would be nice, uh, their phone number, the time of the call, the date of the call, what would be extra nice is 
who they'd like to speak to, all right? And I'm adding one. Now, I'm adding this one. Your initials, all right? So when it's a really good job, they can come say, you did nice, thank you. And if it's a crappy job, you're going to get in trouble. All right, placing a collar on hold. God have mercy. I have heard some of the most unbelievable, ungodly music on the, waiting for somebody to answer the phone. And it's played the same thing over every 10 seconds. It happened this morning. Oh, Lord. Anyway, you should ask the caller's permission before placing them on hold, all right? And what you should really do is wait for an answer. Dr. Perfect's office, please hold. Dr. Perfect's office, will you hold? Uh, excuse me. Wait for an answer. If the patient wants to hold to speak to a certain staff member, you should return to the phone and check with the caller or check with anybody every one minute if you have them on hold. And some phones automatically ring back when you do that, all right? Um, let's see, voicemails, communication tool to record verbal message. An answering service, y'all was so lucky. We didn't get this. We didn't get a lunch hour, okay, or lunch break. We took a bite and went back, took a bite and went back. Now, office is closed from 12 to 1, and that's when you usually turn the phones over to an answering service, all right? And an answering service is buffering or screening every patient's calls and covering when all everybody is at lunch or not available. Yo, lucky ducks, you don't know how easy you got it with that one. All right, page two, telephone techniques. Here we go. Oh, a patient calls with a complaint. Oh, Lord. Now, you need to speak in a lower tone of voice. It may help calm down the angry patient. If they call and they're loud and da 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 and you're just like that, you're going to get nowhere except fired, okay? You have to, it's, remember, it's not personal. It's business. And 99% of the time, you're dealing with people in pain. So just think about yourself if you haven't been in really, really bad pain. Find the source of the patient's problem. Present options or solutions if you can. Any patient that refuses to identify themselves should never be put through to the doctor. Now I'm gonna tell you, it's not in the notes, but the doctor's family, you put them through. Unless he's given you specific instructions. If my Aunt Nana calls, I never want to speak to her. Okay? That's, that's their problem. You should never argue with a patient on the phone or try to place the blame on the patient's actions when a disagreement arises. I know 90% of the time it's going to be the patient's actions because they called all PO'd, and that stands for pissed off. Um, I don't know if it's, you know, text legal, but I don't know. Anyway, okay, don't argue with the patient. Because emergencies, that's BC, because emergencies happen, the doctor cannot be held to specific times of returning patients' phone calls. So don't be specific. Don't tell them the office closes at 4.30, he'll call you back at 4.31. Has that ever happened to you? Does everybody be giving you that specific time? No, anybody in their right mind wouldn't, all right? Okay, urgent call versus an emergency call. They're different. I know they sound alike, but they're different. An example of an urgent call is an animal bite. Now, an animal bite is urgent, but it's not an emergency call. This is uh, primarily going for medical assistance, unless they got bit in the mouth. An example of an emergency call, anybody calling with chest pain, that's an emergency. 911, right off the bat, okay? Or a severe allergic reaction, it's called anaphylactic shock. The tongue swells, you have dyspnea, the throat swells, the patient can die from a, a you know, severe allergic uh, reaction. So that's an emergency. you got to get them to the hospital. Um, these two types of calls can be deadly, the chest pain and the allergic reaction. So you have to act STAT. Do you all remember what STAT means? STAT is the medical term for I needed it yesterday. It means immediately, like so fast, okay? All right, you, the MA or DA, should speak in a moderate pace when talking to the patient on the phone. 
just because the office is crazy, you don't have to go over, well, we got this, we got that, we got an appointment here. What? It's only gonna take up more time because you're gonna to have to repeat it again slower. You can never suggest you be assisted. Never, my husband's walking behind me. Telling me to open my mouth. No, not you, them. No, not you, them. Who's them? Your students when they talk on the telephone. Oh, my students when they talk on the telephone. Just giving us advice. Thank you. Anyway, um, you can never suggest OTC meds. That means over-the-counter medicine. Well, you know, if you got a little fever, you can take an aspirin. Oh, no, you cannot do that. I don't care. You know it works. Don't do it. Time is one of the doctor's most valuable commodities, believe it or not. That is what works for them. All right, patient's appointments. I'm looking at my little clock here. All right, um, the info needed with each appointment. You should get what they're complaining of or their chief complaint in the phone number, okay? Daytime phone number. What you also need, NP, is a new patient, okay? New patient, what you need is their financial arrangements. It should be explained when the appointment is made. If the patient's gonna have a copay and if they're gonna be expected to pay it at the time of service, uh, you have a $40 copay. Well, I can't come in this week. I don't get paid till next week. See what I'm talking about? Always schedule the appointment with serious... I'm sorry. Always schedule the appointment for patients with serious abnormal test results. In other words, the test results came back. It's not good. Don't tell them the doctor's going to give them the information over the phone. Best way is to call them and tell them they need to make an appointment. Mm, kind of understood what's going on there, all right? Um, you should always give the patient choices of time and date. Do you want morning or afternoon? Sometimes they just say, oh, here, 10 o'clock. Well, can I come in after 12? Oh, yeah, we'll save time. If the patient has, now listen to this one. If the patient has waited up to 15 minutes, that's what that little symbol is, after their appointment time, you should offer to reschedule them. Have you ever been in the doctor's office and waited a little 15 minutes past your appointment time? And if you did, has anybody offered to reschedule for you immediately? Like, you know, oh, it's 15 minutes late. You want to reschedule? No, but you need to know it, okay? Um, patients appreciate it when you consider their time when performing your duties in, within the facility and scheduling appointments. Don't make them wait if you can help it. Also, uh, patients with the same procedure, like physical therapy, they may want to come in on the same time and same day every week. So, you know, it gets a, a routine going. Um, if you have to reschedule an appointment for a patient, set the new appointment time, and that's what that X is in parentheses, time. Set the new appointment time make sure you remove the patient's first appointment time and date, all right? That's the easy and the easiest way. When they first come in on their first appointment, the easiest way to verify their insurance is to copy both sides of their insurance card because the front side may say, you know, uh, union life insurance, union health insurance, and their name and their age and date of birth. But the back side's gonna give you for information about admitting a patient, call this number. To get um, permission to do a, a procedure, call this patient. If they need to you know, be pre-approved, that's the number, call that patient. No, call that number, I don't know what I'm saying. Anyway, all right. Um, if the patient fails to keep an appointment. Now, if sometimes they fail to keep an appointment if they don't have the money for the copay or payment. And, you know, if they, they don't have the money, they can't come in. Another reason I wrote right next to it is the office always runs behind. I went to a doctor and I went to them for him for years because he was very good. But when you had a one o'clock appointment, if you got out of there by four or 4.30, you were blessed, okay? But he was like an old country doctor. He'd sit down and take his time and talk with you. So you had his undivided attention. Was it fun to wait? No. Look, I crochet, and I brought yarn and needle one day and almost crocheted a whole afghan. I'm 
I'm not telling the truth, but you can talk, see what I'm talking about? All right. A uh, new patient knows before the first visit. You need to make sure what the new patient knows. Directions to the office, how to get to you. Um, they should know their chief complaint. They should know their fi uh, financial uh, arrangements, what they're going to have. And finally, they have to know what their copay is going to be. All right? So, and you're going to have a list of this insurance companies and what the copay is. You know, um, you have People's Health. You have thirty dollar copay. You have United Healthcare. You have no copay. And if you're not sure, call the insurance company. All right, page three. <clears throat> uh, procedures doctors' offices can schedule. What the, these are operative or outpatient? That's OP outpatient, or it's also operative. But in this case, it's outpatient procedures that you can schedule a patient for an MRI. You can schedule them for CAT scans, and you can schedule them for blood work. Now, if you do the scheduling for blood work, the patient needs to get the appointment time and date of the test. And it's up to you to tell them that they are NPO, meaning nothing by mouth, or you can take this medicine, but don't take this medicine. And you may be sedated for the procedure, so you need to bring somebody to drive you home. If they're coming in to have wisdom teeth extracted, okay? I mean, it's not blood work, but, you know, if blood work, if you, or any test, outpatient. Nowadays, what they do is they give you the name of the place where you can have the test, and you call them and schedule it, which is actually better, because they know their information, and this way it's firsthand. They're being told by the facility, nothing to eat or drink after midnight, and they can't say, oh, well, she told me I could, and she told me I could. So you don't get in the middle like that, all right? Learning the patient's name and the patient's name when it should be used. Um, okay, make an effort to learn their names, please. You're going to be seeing these people for a long time. When they come in, when you greet them, oh, hello, Miss Jones, how are you doing today? All right, during the exam, Miss Jones, you're doing great. We're almost finished. And when the patient leaves the office, uh, Miss Jones, we'll see you back in a week. All right. It's not just, oh, hi, how are you? Uh, you're doing fine. And we'll see you back in a week. That could have been anybody. So be specific. Now, when do you offer assistance to patients? And I'm talking all patients, all right? To any patient who appears to need assistance. But I just clarified that because you're going to offer all patients assistance. Ask the patient if they need assistance in the exam room. Now, you're working for dentists, so if they have to disrobe to get on an exam table, they're not at a dental office, all right? But ask them if they need, you know, do you need any help with anything? Can I put your purse over here for you or whatever? Just offer them help. The reception area, oh, Lord. I have been to doctor's offices where it was so messy. I didn't really trust the doctor. I figured if it's like this and this crappy out here, what's it going to be like back there? I um, mean, you know, you take your life in your hands. The appearance of the reception area influences the patient's perception of the entire office. Okay? If it's messy, it's not good. If it's neat, it appears to be professional. Now, angry and upset patients, if you get one out in your waiting room or your reception area, they should be removed from the reception area stat. And I don't mean you grab them by the collar and drag them back. No, you have a room full of people waiting and one patient gets pissed off. They start to argue. If you don't remove them quickly, you're gonna have a whole bunch of people arguing. Let's say the doctor's running late. They had an emergency, all right? And the people are really, Ugh. All right, but you should have opened that little glass several times and said, I'm so sorry, Dr. Smith's running a little bit late. We had, a, you know, an emergency. So please be patient. We will be with you as soon as possible. If you haven't done that a few times, that kind of accounts for why people get angry. But anyway, remove them from the office. And I don't mean kick them out in the hallway. Bring them to the back, all right? Stat. This can cause, if you don't, it can cause other patients to get upset. It's not professional to have people arguing out in your waiting room. And bringing the disgruntled patient to the back 
and listen. Notice I stretch that out. Listen, okay? Listen to what their complaint is and don't chime in. Oh, I know, I've been like this before. Really? Oh, you're not helping yourself, all right? Just, Mr. Jones, what can I, what can I do to make this better? Or oh, well, what you, what, what is, not what's your problem, but what's, what's the issue? Well, you know, I've been here waiting for an hour and a half and the doctor has had two emergencies. We did not plan on this. We didn't schedule this. But if you would like, I can offer right, and you are in a, a calm tone voice. Because if both of you get loud, it's over. If both of you are going to be out. No patient, no job. All right? Offer to reschedule an appointment for the patient. And look, I apologize. This doesn't happen often. It just happened to be today that this occurred. Can I make an, another appointment for you whenever it's convenient for you? Okay? And it kind of calmed down. They don't, they realize it takes two people to argue. And if both of you have a loud voice, no. But if you keep your head and keep a calm tone of voice, it's going to work, all right? All right, uh, patient's chart or progress notes should be updated with every visit. There should be a clean sheet on the front of the chart with that date written or stamped on it, and that area is for you to put your notes. Now, let me tell you, you're going to get their chief complaint of what they're complaining of. And after that, you're going to initial and date it. Do not leave a big space. Here's the date that was stamped. Here's their chief complaint. And you sign it way down here and date it. That leaves a lot of space. If somebody doesn't really like you to come in and add stuff, okay? And you, you signed it already. So, I mean, it, it doesn't really happen, but... Sign it right under where you've written the chief complaint, all right? Okay, uh, let's see, patient progress notes. Again, they should be updated with each visit, and they should actually be pulled the day before. And that clean sheet should be there for the office visit. You have got to take the patient's personal or family history, all right? The patient history must be taken in an exam room or other private area in the office that won't violate the pop, the patient's privacy. You're gonna sit out in the reception room. Uh, have you ever had uh, an STD? Oh, you have? What was it? You don't think everybody's gonna go, what? So, you know, take them in another area of the you know, office, please. Um, their health record should never, this is their progress notes, should never be left in the exam room with the patient. Now, I know a lot of it now is on computer. Log off when you walk out, okay? Because electric health rec electronic health records, you should, like I said, log out off the computer when you leave the room. Otherwise, patients turn it and they start reading it. They don't understand half the stuff and they get all in a tizzy. How do you like that word, tizzy? I don't want to do. All right, this is the last we're going to do today, all right? Uh, patients exam room. Patients enjoy magazines so they can read articles while visiting or waiting for the doctor. Now, some doctors keep magazines just out in the reception area, but a lot of them now are starting to keep them in the reception area as well back as in the offices. The room should be tidied up or cleaned up immediately, especially now, ladies. Some dental offices I saw on TV yesterday are going to open but they're gonna use different equipment that doesn't um, emit as much of a spray, okay, of the you know, patient's saliva. They're also gonna have a 15 minute time limit between each patient so they clean the room down. Um, all kinds of different, it's gonna be different, okay? You're gonna to have to, you know, the mask, and the patient can't wear a mask. All right, but the room should be tidied, straightened up. It's gonna be wiped down completely. And the table placement, where your dental chair is, is not important. It says table placement. That's for MAs. For DAs, where you, which way your chair faces is not important, okay? The room should not be used just to empty out the reception area. Look, we got too many people out here. Let's put some back here. No, okay? Guardians or parents do not have to accompany all children under 10 years old in the exam room. 
especially in cases of abuse. If the parent's the abuser and you're gonna bring them back with the child, you're not gonna get very far, all right? <laughs> However, minors do need a parent to consent to treatment in most cases, except in emergency. I mean, a kid gets hurt on the volley on basketball or um, football field. They rush him in by ambulance. You think the doctors are gonna stand around like this with their, and nurses with their arms folded saying, we can't do anything, he's bleeding from the brain, but we can't stop it because we don't have parents' permission. No, that's an emergency, all right? Somebody gets hit in the face with a baseball, I mean a hard baseball. They come to your office, they got teeth hanging out, they're bleeding. Are you gonna wait for the patient's parents to come in and sign a form? I don't think so, all right? Last thing for today, the patient's anger may be a reflection of their pain or fear of what the doctor may discover during the exam. Look, I'm telling you, ladies, the doctors can take my uterus, they can take my ovaries, fallopian tubes, they can take out whatever internal organ they want, but don't touch my mouth. When I go to the dentist, you see how my knuckles just kind of like pink? When I go to the dentist, you see how they've changed? That's because my fists are that tight. I am terrified of the dentist. I don't know why, I have always been, but look, I'm like this. And I had to have a dental procedure, and it just so happened one of my former students was the dental assistant. And I'm, you know, like they had to extract a tooth. And I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, to myself, oh yeah, 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 this is a lie. Just, you know, and they had to numb it so many times because I was such a wuss. But the student, well, she was not a student then, she was already a dental assistant. She's standing there and she's assisting in the procedure. Miss O, you're doing great. Miss O, he, they're almost finished. They just have to do a little bit more. They, she didn't say they have to suture up this big hole they made. No, just a little bit more and we'll be done. And you have really done great. Just talk to them a little bit and let them know, all right? Okay, cupcakes, that's all we're going to do today. That red light is blinking like crazy. So I will try to get this uploaded to you anytime within the next two hours, but YouTube takes its time. So when it is uploaded or downloaded, I will send it to you. Uh, excuse me, but I think today is the day I'm supposed to receive flip cards and um, the uh, virtual library. And I haven't gotten that from anybody so you need to email it to me. Now, if you have emailed it to me, I haven't checked my email today. I apologize in advance, but make sure you get that to me today. That's like test work. That is a test. The flip cards is a test. And if it's not here, you're gonna lose points. So I gotta go, because the light's really, really blinking. All right, love you and I'll try to get this done. Bye.